Okay, so we're doing language arts text features today. Um, so you're, you're gonna have to read these and then you're gonna have to select the certain area that helps you learn about wind power. So the question is, look at these pages from a book about different types of energy. Select the text that the text feature that helps you learn about wind power. So, can you read this, the description here? Wind power devices called wind turbines create electricity from wind. When the wind blows, the turbines blades begin to spin. These spin blades connect to a generator which turns wind power into electricity. Good job. So I'm not, I'm, I don't know if you need to read anything else, but it says select the text feature that helps you learn about wind power. What's the, what's the title of this? Wind power. So does the description help you learn about wind power? Yeah. So just by that, you don't need to read anything else. Just by that, you know that it's about wind power and it explains and helps you learn about wind power, which is the question for the problem. So is this the right answer? Yes. Yeah. Good job. So these are kind of two part questions. So the second part goes along with the first part. You'll still get points for it, but yeah, it just relates. Now read the information under the heading wind power. So read it again, uh, this one here. You can read it in your, um, in your mind because I know you read it before. So just quickly read over it and then tell me when you're done. I'm done. Okay. The question is, what are wind turbines blades connected to? So based on the information that you got from reading the description, what can you infer about um, what the wind turbines blades are connected to? So go back in the text and then see, see the area in the text that talks about what the blades are connected to. A generator? Yeah, because you see it here, right? These spinning blades right here are connected to a generator. So it's, it's connected, connect to a generator, right? Good job. Look at these pages from a book about artists. Select the feature that shows you when different pieces of arts were of art were made. Okay, so this doesn't have um a specific title area like it did with wind power. So for this, um you're gonna have to read this part, this part, this fact, and this timeline. Okay, so first uh read this one. Anna Mary Robertson, also known as Grandma Moses, began painting in the 19... 1930s. You don't, yeah, it's like a time period. 1930s, when she was in her 70s, she pointed countryside Scenes she painted. She painted countryside sense scenes. Scenes. scenes scenes based on childhood memories. She continued creative paintings until the age of 
101. So does that um Okay. Well we'll we'll come back to that. That gives us a lot of information, right? Now read this next part. Bill Trailer was born into slavery in the 1850s. He worked as a farmer for most of his life. Around 1939, he began drawing on pieces of scrap papers. He created more than 1,000 pieces of art over his lifetime. Good job. That also gives us a lot of information, but we can't tell until we read it all. Now read this, uh, read this fact about the painting. In this 1943 painting, two children asleep by a wood store. The artist Horace Pippin painted many everyday scenes like this one. Nice. Now let's read the last one. Um, read when, like the year, and um, what the art piece was. 1910s, August Natural Witch Head. 1950s, Grandma Moses, Julie Fourth. 19, 18, 19. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Um, uh, that's not the way you read a timeline. It, it looks like it is, but it's not. So the 1890s came before the 1910s, which is pretty obvious. So this means the one. So it goes here. Then the next event goes here. Then the next event goes here. Then the next event goes here. So 1890s, 1910 is greater, 1940 is greater, 1950 is greater, right? And this is July, okay? So can you restart by saying this one first, then this one, then this one, then this one. That's how timelines work. It's very weird, but that's how it works. Can you read it again, please? Starting from this one, to this one, to this one, to this one. 1890s, Harry Powers, Victoria Quilt. Nice. 1910s, August, Natural Witch Head. Na 1940s, Harris Pippin Sunday Morning Breakfast. 1950s, Grandma Moses, July 4th. Nice. Okay. So, we read all this. Now, what is, so we come back to the question. Select the text feature that shows you when different pieces of art were made. So, can you tell me, just as a rough guess, which text feature do you think supports this statement? I mean, the question that you need to answer. Which part of the text or which text feature supports the claim? I mean, the question that shows you when different art pieces were made. Bill Trailer. Okay, let's read Bill Trailer's one again. Bill Trailer was born into slavery in the, 19, uh, the 1850s. He worked as a farmer for most of his life. Around 1939, he began drawing on pieces of scrap paper. He created more than 1,000 pieces of art over his lifetime. So, when, okay. So, th that, is, that is true. It does, it shows when different pieces of art were made. 
and how many he made. But the same thing applies to here. This one is mainly a fact about the painting or describes the painting. The main key word here is when. Because it says that shows you when different pieces of art were made. And another one is different. So to help you out, in the, um, in this one, right? So first it shows different art pieces, right? It shows the pictorial quilt, the witch's head, the Sunday morning breakfast, July 4th, right? It shows different art pieces. So that's one part of the question. But it says when it shows them when they were made. And here it shows that it was made in the 1890s, made in the 1910s, made in the 1940s, 1950s, and so on. So this text feature in the text supports this question when it says select the text feature that shows you when when different pieces of art were made. It shows you when they were made, with the years. It shows you, it tells you the names of the different, and it tells you the names of the diff different pieces of arts. Because it's not only one, because you have four different pieces, right? So is this a reasonable text feature that would support the question? Yes or no? Yes. So do you understand why it was this one? Yeah. Okay. Nice. Because I don't want to get you confused because before the other one also said that, but that was mainly of a particular artist. And Bill Trailer, it didn't actually explain like what his art pieces were. And it's when it's a different art pieces that also indicates that it has to be from a different um, artist. And when he said he made over a thousand pieces, it does show him, it does tell us the different pieces that he made, but it doesn't like show us by different artists also. Because here it says when it was made and the different pieces by different artists. But I can see why you thought it was Bill Trailer, but just to not, that one was kind of tricky. So just to not get you confused, um, read it back and read the question well, analyze it properly. Look at the key words in the question and connect that to the text. And then you can find your answer from there. Okay. When did August Natterer create Witch's Head? So I want you to give me the answer. So when they say when, they mean what year. So find August Natterer, find if she made the witch's head, and then what year did she make it? In the 1910s. In the 1910s? How do you know that? It's on the page. Yeah, because it says August Natterer, right? It says the witch's head, which is right here. So it says, so right now we know, we know the artist and we know the painting that was there. So that's pretty much convinced us that this is, well, <laughs> not pretty much, but it did convince us that this is the right one. So all we have to look at is the year, which is the 1910s. So therefore 1910s would be the right answer. Okay, good job. Look at these pages from a book about different ways of preserving food. Select the text feature that gives examples of different preserved foods. So again, this doesn't have a certain title like the first one did. We're gonna have to read every one of them properly analyze it and see which one's right. This one looks kind of tricky because there's a lot of sections. Let's start off with the first one. Can you read this? And include the, uh, the start of the 
small little paragraph because it helps you get it helps you remember like the details of this way to preserve food. Can you read that for me, please? Pickling. In pickling, fresh vegetables are soaked in vinegar, salt, and sugar. This gives the vegetables and sweet and soft, soft flavor. If they are store safety, they can last for a long time. Very good. So we have a lot of information about that, right? Now, let's move on to the next one. Fermenting. Fermenting is another way to make food or drinks last longer. A food or drink that is fermented has been thrown chemicals chemical changes through chemical changes through chemical changes yeast mold and bacteria can all cause food to ferment examples for fermented food include yogurt cheese and sour cream nice so it also gives us a lot of information and details. Now, this is a fact. If we see stuff like this, this is a fact, okay? Uh, can you read this, please? Freeze dried ice cream can last for years because all of its water has been removed. Yeah, see how it gives you a fact? Okay, so I don't want you to read all this because it's a lot. It's not really like a text or like a description like the other ones. It just says preserved foods and in each section it has different things. So I'll read them. So it says canned. In the canned section it has tomato sauce, peas, soup, right? And the cured. Um, section as salami, pepperoni, ham. In the dried section, it has raisins, apricots, prunes. In the jellied section, they have jam, marmalade, preserves, stuff like that, right? So we know we read all of this and we got a lot of information. Now it says select the text feature that gives examples of preserved foods. So again, we need to look for keywords in the question to help us go back into the text and see the text features to see which ones support it. So the main word is examples and different preserved foods, right? So can you tell me which text feature do you think it is? The last one. This one? Yeah. Why? Because it has different preserved foods and uh, it has preserved food in the page. Yeah, yeah. so you, you got the answer right. It's just your wording is a little off. I mean, <laughs> your wording is good. It's just, there's a little way to make it better. So a way, if you're like trying to explain something like a short answer, like if they ask you on a test, like if you say this is the answer and they ask why, you can like restate the question and say, this section gives examples of different preserved foods because it has all these different options, something like that, you know? That's something if they would ask you on a test, um, I think, <laughs> but if it ever does, then that's how you would improve your wording. So yeah, you're right. It has preserved foods. It has different examples and different types. Very good. 
how is ham preserved? So read the information in this chart. I'm not going to help you with this one. It is how is ham preserved? It's cured. Cured. Right. Because it's in the section that says cured and it has salami, pepperoni, and ham is in this section, right? Nice. Okay. Sure. We'll do one or two more and then, um, yeah, it's probably going to be it. So, meanings. Okay. Look at these pages from a book about tennis. Select a text feature that shows the meanings of these, of, of words related to tennis. Okay, can you read this uh, first one here? Oh, uh, you're muted. The Rancho Brothers. In 1861, Ernst and William Rancho were born in the English town of Limington. The twin brothers often played tennis as a team. They ex city playing style helped, helped make tennis a popular sport. Playing together in doubles, they won five Wimbledon championships. Nice. So we got a lot of information from there. And let's move to this one. Okay. Uh, can you read it? Althea G Gibson. Althea Gibson was born in 1927 in Silla, South Car Carolina. Oh. She won Caroline. She won her first tennis tournament at just 15 years of age. In 1956, she became the first African American to win the French championship ships. The following year, she became the first African American to win the Wimbledon championship and U.S. nationals. Very good. Very impressive. Really good job. Okay, now we have this one which is a timeline similar to the one before. Um, can you read it, please? So in this case, actually, sorry. Um, we start from the first one, then we go here, then here, then here, then here, or sometimes it starts here, then it goes here, but whatever the pattern is. So another key thing is to find if it's greater, then that's the next one, or if it's right here, then it goes here, then it goes here, right? Okay, so start from here and then go all the way to the end. Jiddi Pong, a type of tennis, is played in France. Okay, that's in the 1000s. That was, um, that was a really long time ago. That was like, that was 21,000 years ago. Okay. Uh, the next one. Can you read it? 1015s. The tennis red in is invented. 1874. 18, 1874. Oh, um, for the 15, for the 15,000s, it's not 15,000s because it's out of three zeros. People say 1500s. Okay. Thousands, you can't say ten hundreds. I mean, could, but it's just not really how it's used. But fifteen hundreds is used properly. So, 
Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Could you read the next one? Wall 1874. Walter Clopton Wingfield published a tennis rule book. 1877, the first Wimbledon championships are held. 1968, tennis becomes a truly professional sport. Good job. Okay. So now here in the glossary, it just has a bunch of words, backhand, a racket stroke, the back facing out, rally, series of back and forth hits. Um, <clears throat> um, a tennis match between two pairs of players is doubles, and the hit that puts the ball into play, serve, forehand, you know, so on and so forth. So select the text feature that shows the meanings of words related to tennis. Can you tell me which one it is? Glossary. Uh, yeah. Because it has all the different words and it explains what the words mean and they're related to tennis. So yeah, that is the right one. And this is the last part we're gonna do. Um, what does rally mean? So we have to go back to the glossary. We have to read the definition. So what does it mean? A series of black and forth his hits. Yeah, so that's this one, right? Right. Right. So that one is the right answer. Okay, so do you understand how to use text features? Yeah. We can continue this one uh, next week. Um, but yeah, that's it for this section on text features.